Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Arbaz Khan. Along with me is Rabi Kanjat. Today we are going to present on the topic deadlock detection and prevention. Before moving towards detection and prevention, let's see what is deadlock. Deadlock. A deadlock is a situation where more than one process is blocked because these processes are holding a resource and on the same time requesting for another resource that is acquired by some other process. Therefore, none of the processes get executed. A deadlock can occur if following four conditions hold simultaneously. These conditions are mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption, and circular wait. Mutual exclusion. Only one process can use a resource at a given time. That means the resources are non-shareable. Hold and wait. You can see in diagram, process 1 is holding resource 1 and waiting for resource 2 that is acquired by process 2. Same scenario for process 2 that is holding resource 2 and waiting for resource 1. No preemption. A process can release it, its resources after completing its execution. Circular weight. The diagram on the right shows a circular chain between process 1 and process 2, where each of them is waiting for a resource held by next process in the chain. This creates a circular relation between these processes and they have to wait forever to be executed. Deadlock prevention means eliminating one of the four scenarios that cause deadlock. Through this process, the OS will only receive safe requests and the system will not become unresponsive due to a deadlock occurring. Mutual exclusion is one of the conditions that can cause deadlock. In this, a non-shareable resource such as printer receives multiple requests from different processes, each of which requires exclusive access to the resource. To handle this, a queue is made which consists of all the requests in a sequential order. Hold and wait is another condition that causes deadlocks. As the diagram shows, we have a process P1 that is holding a resource R1 and at the same time requesting for resource R2. Similarly, process P2 is holding resource R2 and requesting for a resource R1. There are two ways to prevent hold and wait. One is by preventing wait, which means the resource required by a process is determined beforehand. So the process does not have to wait for alloca resource allocation. The other way is to prevent hold, which means a process has to release the resources it is currently holding before requesting for another resource. No preemption is another condition for deadlock in which a process that is requesting for a resource is holding a resource that is required by other processes. To prevent this, the process has to release held resource when requesting for another resource. In doing so, the process is temporarily, temporarily suspended as it has to request for the resource it released to continue execution. Circular weight is the final condition for deadlock in which a resource required by a process is held by another process and the resource required by that process is held by a third process, forming a closed circular structure. To prevent this, each resource is given a priority and processes can only request for a resource in the order of increasing priority. As the diagram shows, process P1 can only request resource R2 if the priority of R2 is greater than that of R1. Similarly, process P2 can only request for R1 if the priority of R2 is less than that of R1. Otherwise, the request will be invalid. Deadlock detection. In this approach, the operating system doesn't apply any mechanism to avoid or prevent the deadlock. Therefore, system considers that the deadlock will definitely occur. In order to get rid of the deadlock, the OS periodically check the system for any deadlock. If the deadlock is detected, then we use the techniques to recover from detected deadlock. 
two cases in deadlock detection single instance and multiple instance in single instance resource type if a circle is being formed in the system then there will definitely be a deadlock on the other hand in multiple instance resource type detecting a cycle is not just enough we have to apply safety algorithm on the system by converting the resource allocation graph into the allocation matrix and request matrix let's see both with an example here is a constructed resource graph for a system that consists of seven processes that are shown in circle and six resources that are shown in square boxes by constructing resource graph it become clear that a cycle exists in this graph one way is that each node is taken as a root one by one by performing depth search on it if it come back to the node that is already checked it means that cycle exists let us take node r as a root here here resource r is allocated to the process a after completion of the process a the resource r will be free and no other process need that resource so here node r is not repeating therefore no deadlock here let's move to the node d as a root here process d need resource d that is acquired by process e same scenario for process e that needs resource v and that is acquired by process g on the other hand process d is holding resource u which process g needed so node d is repeating here that means a cycle exists here we have detected a deadlock same process is repeated for all nodes if there is no circle then it means there is no deadlock after searching all nodes of this graph process d e and g are deadlocked whereas process a b c and f are not deadlocked for multiple resources of each resource type we have matrix based algorithm for detecting deadlock here we have four resource classes which are labeled as tape drive plotters printers and cd rom where variable e gives the total number of instances of each resource in existence and a gives currently available resources here matrix c shows the current allocated resources to each process and matrix r shows that additional resources needed by each process to run the deadlock detection algorithm we look for the process whose resource request is equal or less than the currently available resources let have a look on the requested matrix of a process 1 comparing request of the process 1 with available resource the process 1 cannot get request resources because there is no cd rom available similarly comparing process to matrix with available resources same it cannot be executed because there is no cd rom free but the request of third process can be satisfied by comparing with variable resources so process 3 will execute after completion of the process 3 and it will return its all resources allocated resources also request resources after returning resources add, adding the previous available resources with allocated resources to process 3 that will be our new available resources now comparing request matrix of process 2 with available resources but again we see process 2 cannot be executed due to not availability of cd rom so let's compare process 1 here the request matrix of process 1 also not satisfied as it needs cd rom that is not available so from here we conclude both the processes p1 and p2 cannot be completed within the available resources 
so deadlock occurred in process 1 and process 2 so that's all i hope you get a brief concept of deadlock detection and prevention thank you